So I sent um, something to the group because immediately I posted the link. I think I posted that link three minutes before six or so, and everyone was kind of absent. So that, that shouldn't be cool. Okay, we should just try to show up as early as possible when I paste the link. All right. So once again, welcome to the um, Prize Action Mogul webinar. Honestly, everything I'm going to teach you all through this training, okay? If you can commit, if you can um, do everything that I instruct you to do, you would actually see massive results. All right, if you can do everything I instruct you to do, you actually see massive results, okay? So we would begin from the scratch, we begin from the beginning. All right, let me try to share the screen right here. So, some of you might have um, gotten this particular material before, and then you might have not gotten the whole thing. <clears throat> so, previous um, students that were here, you can always go back to watch the previous class instead, okay? Or if you feel that like every thing in this room might be helpful, then great for you, right? So we begin from the beginning. We begin from the beginning, all right? So this is everything I would be teaching you, the concept of financial asset trading, the importance, okay? Then we move down to this place, all right? These areas are still kind of the simple areas of this webinar, right? And then we move down to the market terminologies, all right? Then from market terminologies, then we move forward to um, trends and ranges, okay? This is where we see certain things. And then we move forward to charts, pattern, psychology. And then we move on to this next crazy place because all these areas are more like the main things, all right? When you've known about the little things, then these are the secondary things, all right? The advanced things that you need to you know, like the price levels and um, the candlestick psychology. Believe me, it's beyond what you see on YouTube. It's beyond what you see on YouTube. And then we move on to this place and then we talk about the setup and risk management. So I believe this would be a great ride, right? I believe this would be a great ride. So let's, let's begin, let's begin. So if you understand everything I've said so far, let me know in the comment section. All right, if you are serious and I've said so far, let me know in the comment section. So most people don't understand the concepts of financial asset trading. You know, they hear about some forex, what's the meaning of forex, what's the meaning of stock, what's the meaning of metals, crypto, synthetic EDC, CFD, whatever it is, right? So the thing is, all of them, they have, something in common, all right? They have something in common, and that is what's called candlesticks, all right? They have price in common. They have candlesticks, right? They all have candlestick charts, right? So, um, either yes, I'm talking about Forex, stock, crypto, synthetic, blah, blah, blah. They all have candlesticks. So if you can read candlesticks and if, you can read price levels, you can trade these markets, right? And if you'll be following the fundamental analysis, then that's all good, right? But then what brings all these markets together, I can see Toby's comment, what brings all these markets together is what candlesticks, right? Candlesticks, price levels, okay? So meaning of trading, trading does mean um, buying and selling, all right? You are selling when everyone is buying, yeah, they're selling when some people are, have bought and then they're losing money. And then you are buying when some people have sold and then they are losing money, right? So while trading, try to understand that there is someone somewhere that is losing money to you, okay? And when you lose money, remember that your money is going to somebody else, all right? That is trading. So what you want to achieve as a profitable forex trader is this, okay? You are not trying to prevent 
yourself from losing money to anybody else. That's a wrong mindset, okay? You are trying to make sure that the amount of money you pay to the market is lower than what you make to yourself, right? You are trying to be at the winning edge of the market, right? You are trying to be at the winning area of the market, right? So trading just involves selling and buying an asset, selling an asset when it is overbought, buying an asset when it is oversold. Okay, so when people talk about um, I'm trading forex, I'm trading stock, I'm trading blah blah blah. If you can understand everything that, that actually guides guides on price action, you can trade any of these things, right? You can trade any of these things following their news. Maybe they say something like um um maybe BTC is going to buy at 56k. Okay, you make your own price action analysis, and then you see that okay, fine. If it should it, it's what would make me know that this market price is going to go up? That's what we'll learn later. Okay, so everything that you know about price before, just remove them from your mind and dump them in the, in the trash can. Okay, because everything I'm teaching you right now, let me say it is more of um, a multi million skill, like I did tell you every time, it's a multi million skill. Okay, because everything I'm teaching you is just the same thing I used to um, manage millions, and then I don't have to like go down to depth and all that because i've experienced so much and i can tell you that it's not always a good thing right you're doing something and then it's um, it's it has no edge right so that's all about financial assets trading so either it's forex either it's stock either it's metal that is gold that's crypto it's crypto either it's um, synthetic volatility and either it's um, a modern cfd in this is like um us 30 and press like that okay they are all markets all right but while being a, while becoming a first trader, I just choose three, two, four assets that you focus on every day. All right, three, four assets that you focus on trading every single day. All right, so if you're that everything so let me know. And move on to the importance of learning about financial assets trading. Like, why do you really have to learn about? Why do you have to hone your skills? <coughs> excuse me, on this. Why do you have to build your skills in this industry, right? And one thing is that it gives you the ability to thrive in the wealth industry, right? Where everyone is losing money, okay? If you and someone are running a business, you make 100K per transaction, the person makes 100K per, per transaction, all right? If you're a trader, of course, you can use 100K to make so much money. So when the economy is down, you have a bigger edge, all right? because you can actually make money. So being a trader gives you access to cash flow. That is money to come in, all right? Money coming in, money coming in for you. And also network building, all right? Some people are trading Forex not because they just want cash flow, like maybe a monthly gain or something. They just want to build their networks. Right? Maybe they have other income stream and they don't want to build their um, networks. Okay, maybe, I, maybe they have um, 1 million and are trying to make it 2 million or 3 million in the next, maybe six months, next month or a year, all right? So learning, learning about this actually makes you more money, you know, more money that you can use to take care of yourself, go on vacation, you know, do whatever you want, all right? But the main thing is that it gives the ability to thrive, all right? It makes you so much money. Because one thing about being a very, 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 very skilled forex trader is this, all right? If there is somebody out there that you know, and then they don't know what to do with their 50 million USD. And then you know how to trade, right? They can always invest in your skill because they trust you and they know that you are very, very good. Okay. So they can give you, okay, don't worry, just take this 50 million years and you know, um, trade it and give me so so right at the end of um a year, six months, whatever it is, right? So when you use that to trade, of course, you 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 should be gaining up to 25 million USD. That is what leverage, all right? So forex trading gives you leverage. Trading financial assets generally gives you leverage, but then people, we use forex because that's what people, that's that's a popular term, okay? But forex is just a small percentage of what the market actually is, okay? Because if I were to say it as what I trade, I would say learn synthetic indices trading, but then um, people don't really know all of that. Right, so they believe it's just forex. Forex is just a, it is just a section 
right? It's just a section, um, USD card, Euro USD, Euro GBP, and different ones like that, right? So that is for like, stock. We have um, Tesla, we have um, um, Visa, we have Amazon. We have a lot of that, right? It's stock actually companies, right? And then we have yeah. gold, silver, right? So people actually trade rubies that amount, but then I, I, it's not on my broker, blah, blah, blah. And then there's crypto, we have um, BTC, Ripple, we have um, Bitcoin Cash, right? We have Ethereum, we have Litecoin, we we have um, USDT, right? And then we have synthetic indices. And that synthetic indices, we have um, volatility indices, we have crash and boom indices, we have step indices, we have rate break indices, we have jump index indices, jump indices actually. And then um, CFD or some brokers, CFD, they are um, markets under the class of CFD, that is um, US 30, NAS 100, right? So those are all of that, right? So they are all financial assets, all right? So all I'm teaching is how to actually trade any one of them, okay? Everything I'm teaching you can make you trade in many markets, but guess what anyone has to say, okay? Even to the point I'm using this to actually <laughs> predict whether, <laughs> all right? So uh, let's move to the next thing, the reality of the trading market. So if I'm too fast, let me know, because the last um, people, you know, I had to be um, sure if I was too fast then, because what we're supposed to take 30 days on, we took like 15 days on it, okay? So I might be too fast, but maybe it's because it's actually sinking. So if I'm not moving too fast, let me know, okay? Let me know in the comment section. And if you understand everything I'm saying so far, like if you are clear about everything I've said so far, let me know and then let's move on, okay? So let's try to engage. Uh, let me see, you all are not on, you're not switching your camera, except Toby. Except Toby, I can see just Toby. I can see, is it do? Pabu Iteni, uh, Majaito Sin, Victor, Musumola. I can see your faces. Switch on your videos, I can see your faces, okay? If I'm not moving too fast, let me know in the comment section. You all are not actually engaging. Let me know in the comment section if I'm not moving too fast, okay? So the next one is the reality of the trading market okay let me know if i'm moving too fast though, because <laughs> all what i'm covering right now even up to this point i don't think i covered them in one day and it seems like i'm about to cover them in one day <laughs> okay uh let's let's uh, move forward then let's move forward let's move, as far as you understand them everything i'm saying okay so let's move forward so the reality of training the market you know a lot of people have wrong beliefs, all right? Wrong notions about the financial markets. Okay, they have wrong beliefs about the financial markets, all right? So, one thing about the financial market is that it involves buyers and sellers, right? And that is actually true, okay? The market involves buyers and sellers. So, whenever you are trading, always remember that someone is losing and someone is winning. Okay, someone is losing and someone is winning. All right, always remember that. And one thing, and that thing is that the market gives you the potential to make money without dealing directly with people. Of course, people money that is in the market, right? They are not dealing directly with them. What are you dealing with? You are dealing with human behavior. Okay. You are dealing with human behavior. You're not dealing directly with them, you know, directly like talking to them. No, you are trying to read their mind. What are they about to do next? Are people about to buy this market price? Are people about to dump this market price? Are people about to sell this market price? Are people indecisive about buying or selling this market price? Right? So being a forex trader, you are dealing well with the human psychology of selling. And probably being a forex trader, you know, knowing about price can actually make a good business post because you know how you know, you would know how to negotiate price with people, right? It's all about negotiation, okay? It's all about negotiation and knowing if people are ready, right? So you guys know why it's more of a psychological thing because there are psychological price levels that humans are ready to buy, okay? So it gives the potential to make money without dealing directly with people. All you need to be 
do is just be in front of your PC, check the market movement. Okay, it's going to buy, it's going to sell, or it's going to, it's going to do that. You buy, you sell, that's all. Okay. And then another thing is this, it doesn't guarantee fixed outcomes every month. It doesn't. The market doesn't guarantee fixed outcomes every month. So now imagine what happens to all those companies that give fixed salary every month. You can only see them prosper for too long, but it's not sustainable. There are many of them that have actually come out, right? The present one was um, the Rack Sally business, right? And it's done already. It's not because this, this is a bad person or something. It may, not, it may not actually be a bad person, but the system is not sustainable. Maybe if you have someone to tell him that this system is not sustainable, improve your business, it might have been better, right? And you might have good intentions, but then, you can um, adjust your network or connect your audio, connect your audio, all right, connect your audio. So it might, it might have good intentions, but then it just, it, it just couldn't work out that way because there are certain laws, there are certain laws, um, Musmala, check your network, okay? Check your network connection and all that, okay? So, the forex market doesn't guarantee fixed returns, right? Doesn't guarantee that at all. Say you give people 10% per month, 50% per month, 20% per month, every single month, come on. You can't decide that for the market. Conditions can. Can change anything, okay? Just give me a second. Give me a sec.
All right, brief, um, brief distraction. I was running out of um, data already. So I just had to go new one. I didn't check through. Okay, so um, as I was saying, the market doesn't guarantee fixed outcomes every month. All right, so the conditions always change. So while you are dealing with people, okay, what people are giving orders as as returns per month, give it to them per year. Okay. I run a year contract with people. I don't do six months. Nah, I don't. A year. A year contract period. If you're not agreeing, then you know just just help yourself out. Right? Because you the market does not have fixed outcomes every month. Okay, so no fixed ROI. Okay, and one thing, another thing about the market is this: you can see the future accurately, right? But you can put it based on reactions. All right, so if you can hear me, let me know. If you can hear me, let me know, okay? Let me know if you can hear me so I can continue from where we stopped. It's just some network issues, that's all. If you can hear me clearly, let me know so I can continue from where we stopped. All right, all right, great, great. So, you can you can only see the future of the markets, you know, based on previous markets candle signals. Okay, so this implies that um, you can't want to be right all the time. Okay, because you are only going to happen in the market based on what previous information. 
that the market actually gives out, okay? Because that is how you actually make money from the markets, right? Previous formation. So you can see it accurately, but then it is dependent on the history of market price. Okay, so you can't be 100% every time. You are still going to make losses sometimes. But we'll take care of all of that, right? So let's move on. There are no, there are no impossibilities in the markets, okay? It is possible to make 500% per month. And it's, <laughs> it's also possible to lose 150% of the capital in one month. Okay, so it's now depends on now what's the market because if, if you want to be greedy with the market, the market will also be greedy with you. Okay, so there are no impossibilities. When you see someone saying, Wow, they made 500% of their capital, well, it, it, it's, it's possible, but then it's also possible that they actually lose all of that too, right? It's possible that they lose all of that and then that's the end, right? So don't gamble with markets. Okay, don't gamble with market, don't say that. Um, it is impossible for you to record 20 losses. 20 losses are real. It has happened to me before 20 straight losses, okay? You can feel that, okay, fine, you are a pro, most is 30 or something. But then there are things that can actually affect your thinking capital that can affect your trade performance, okay? So when you develop successful trading habits, which I will teach you all along, you would actually win better and you would remain because it is not a sprint, all right? It is not about... Um, you know not to trade. It's about being able to remain in the game of trading profitably, okay? Being sustainable in the forex market, right? So, another thing you need to know about the market is that you need an edge to beat the market, whereby you have a checkmate card that the market loses to, okay? You need an edge to be the market. That means you need something more like something you give the market as well as like checkmates. I I got you. Won. Checkmates, I'm the fucking winner. Right? So you need an edge to be the market. And this is where the market loses to you. What is my market edge? Right? Number one, my, my candlestick analysis. I know okay, this is when the market is trying to make that many points. Right. Next thing is management, right? And, the, and how I place my entries, right? Leading, leading to more win rates. Okay, so that's an edge. The market loses to me at that moment because I take more money from the market. That is not the market itself, but those on the lose end. Right? So you need an edge to be the market, whereby you have a checkmate card that the market loses to. So I'm, I'm going to teach all of that to the, the winning edge, okay? Because you, you need edge, especially with the market in different ways, a risk management edge, Money management edge, you know, trade man, um, trade management at position size edge. Okay, you need those edge to actually win in the market. And then there is no strategy that is, there is no one hundred percent strategy. Okay, even if I'm teaching you, I still make losses at least once in a while. Okay, I was causing the losses. Maybe um, I enter the market at the wrong area or I was in pain and then the market went against me or I traded against the trend and most of the time it could actually eat the stuff right so there so there's no hundred percent strategy and, and, and then we do there are times that maybe you did not just place the stop loss very well and then you know you lose to get right you lose that money to the market okay so there is no hundred percent strategy Right, there's no 100 percent strategy. And fast time is riskier, some is safer. Okay, if you don't want to blow your account, if you don't want to blow your account, always remember this rule. Faster means riskier, slower means safer. Okay. Slower means safer. Don't look for quick returns. Look for stable, steady. All right. You can risk 5% or 10% in your account per, per trade position. And then you can make, you know, if you use 5% and, and it goes by 10 times, that's 50% right, right? But then slower, I risk 1% and make it as 5% or 10% slower, right? Slower and safer, right? If you actually manage a large equity, always remember this rule, slower means safer. Okay, slower means safer. Faster means riskier. 
for me at this point, I don't look for fast opportunities anymore. I look for steady opportunities, right? So when you say people, you know, um, trading like animals and all that, just ignore, just, just take your eyes off it because it's a trap, a big trap, okay? And always remember this, you are no boss of the market, no matter how you've been winning the market, okay? It, a trade that hits stop loss will teach you a great lesson. <laughs> a trade that actually hits stop loss will teach you that you're no boss of the market, okay? It's teach you that you're no boss of the market. So no one is a boss of the market. We always learn from the market because market shows different things, right? So we learn from the market, all right? You're no boss of the market. So, and always remember that losing to the market is normal. Losses are a norm, and I regard them as training fees, okay? Losses are a norm, and we're regarded as training fees, while wins are regarded as trophies. That, that's what I see it. Okay, whenever I lose to the market, okay, I try to go, hmm, what is the market trying to teach me here? What is the market trying to bring my attention? Because when you lose money to the market, Okay, when you lose money to the market, it means market is telling you, hey, hey boy, look, this is what you're doing wrong. Because from every loss, there's a lesson. So you need to find the reason why you lost to that market. If this makes sense to you, let me know in the comment section. Okay, if you understand everything I've said so far, let me know in the comment section. Okay. There is a multi-million dollar lesson in every loss you make. And that's how I become better, okay? So you move from making stupid losses to making deserved losses to the market, okay? Remember what I call them training fees, okay? <laughs> training fees, all right? Training fees, like I see you. Training fees, okay? Nobody loves to pay expensive school fees. Nobody loves to pay um, money that is too expensive for them to learn something, okay? So whenever you're trying to lose the market, ask yourself, am I ready to pay the market this tuition fee to learn a new lesson? What if I flop the exam? Is this my stop loss? Oh my God, that's all, right? Losses I know, and they have to learn something. But then they become ghosts, they become dangerous, they become bad for you when they are too expensive for you. So that's why I always advise risk 1% of your equity. Forget about every bullshit you see online. Risk 1% of your account size, okay? And when you win, those are your trophies. It's a sign that, okay, fine, you've done your own well. You've analyzed this well. So here's a reward day. Congratulations. Now you can graduate to the next level. But when you lose, oh, look, look, look. I want you to be better, but I want you to see why this happened. Everything I put in this course, I just... As a result of loss, it's not what I saw in any um, PDF or YouTube or something. As a result of all the losses I've made, more than 400K, all the losses, I mean you actually, <laughs> all the losses I've made, right? All the losses I've made actually put all of this together, right? So losses teach you a lot and embrace them, but then make sure you don't lose too much by following the rules. And when the losses happen, learn from them. Okay, because as we become better, you're not supposed to make so much. And when you make those losses, it could just be maybe you don't need to learn something, so you need to take a break. Okay, so losing is normal. So losing, when you lose, ah, what did I do wrong? Just look for it. Oh, next time I won't do this again. That's all. All right. So you need leverage and risk management skills to be able to beat the markets. Okay, you need leverage and risk management skills to be able to beat the markets, right? So this means that when you are trying to make money, okay? When you're entering the market and you're risking 1%, risk 1% to make 2%, risk 1% to make 3%, risk 1% to make 4%, 
this one percent means five percent. That is a one to two, one to three RRR. That is risk to reward. One to four, one to five RRR, right? Risk to reward. Okay, risk to reward. Yeah. So that is leverage. So that when you lose, you still have money to run your next trade. Okay, and you need risk management skills to beat the market. That is the amount of money you lose, okay? Because while you have your sword, which is your leverage, you should also remember to have your what's a strong shield, risk management, right? Risk management. Okay, now you have the leverage, you are about to enter a trade that is going to give you two times your risk, three times your risk, right? Oh. Get fighting, fighting, fighting. What, but what if even the skills so that's the word? What if the opponent tries to trust a sword into your tummy? Where is your shield? Where is your fucking shield? That is risk management. You need all of that to be the market. Okay, we we'll treat all of that. Okay, and trading requires the law of scalability. When people start say things like treat it like a business, that's what it means. That is what it means, okay? Trading requires adopting the law of scalability. What's the law of scalability? Who knows? In the comment section. What is the law of scalability? What is the law of scalability? Hmm? What is the law of scalability? No idea, okay. This happens most time in business. And if you really want to make so much money from trading, trade like a business. The law of scalability says that you should have a fixed amount of money you lose and make so much money. Okay. The law of scalability lose this amount of money, pay your workers this amount of money every time, but make sure your money is making this amount of money every time. Okay. Pay your workers this amount of money every month. But make sure what you're making is like this, like this, like this, right? That's lost credibility. So how does that apply to trading? Have a fixed money you're losing to the market. Keep it fixed. So we don't understand the meaning of this. They also feel like, okay, let me use them 20 pip stop loss. Okay, they put it. Let me put 50 pip stop loss. Nah, it's not that way. It's not that way. I probably talk about this because they don't, they don't just want you to know. They don't want you to know. All right, love scalability. Have a fixed amount of money you are losing on every trade. Okay, if you are trading a ten thousand dollar account, it's one percent of one hundred dollar. Lose one hundred dollar on every trade. Ten thousand dollar account. Lose one hundred dollar account. You use lose a one hundred dollar on every trade. Okay, and when you make money from those trade, make sure you are making two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar, four hundred dollar, five hundred dollar. Okay, as a call. Right, 200 can be 300, can be 400, can be 500. So, just can give you 10 times, so just can give you two times. Just take it, right? Love scalability, but you know that you're losing just $100. Okay. And patience, discipline, and clarity is needed as a trader. Patience, patience to wait for that setup, patience to take the analysis, right? Discipline, okay. Discipline, okay, fine. I see my trigger, let me enter. Right, enough discipline to go through your charts, follow your trading plan. Discipline, very important, and clarity. You need to be clear about what you want to see. Okay, you need to be clear about where the market is going to turn, where your entry trigger will show, the kind of entry trigger you are showing. It must be specific. You must be clear about it. You must be clear about your entry. You must be clear about the trend. You must be clear about your exit. Okay. If you've not gotten all of that, you've not done anything yet, okay? So you, you need to be patient to wait, to respect of what the market does. Just wait. Don't be scared of missing that trade. Don't be scared of missing a trade. If you miss that trade, tell yourself, another trade will come tomorrow. Another setup will form next week, okay? Another setup will form next week, all right? So and be disciplined enough to follow your trading plan. You, you, you form your trading plan and you must follow it religiously. Okay, because I follow my trading plan. I don't go outside 
my trading plan. Now, nah, I don't go outside my trading plan. Okay. It must be clear about your entries, your exits, the trend, where the market will turn. Clear. Clarity. Clarity is important. And remember that trading is not a gamble. All right. Trading is not a gamble. So don't gamble the markets. 1% per trade, period. 1% per trade, period. I would teach you how to calculate all of that. Okay. This is just the preparatory areas, right? So you open um, a demo trading account on binary.com. Okay, you can use binary, you can use the Revit, still the same broker. Okay, so on binary.com, create a demo account, use synthetic indices. Okay, and you can open a financial account also, right? But also synthetic indices. Okay, so create synthetic indices. So I check financial also. It depends on, you can choose whichever one you want to trade, right? You can choose whichever one you want to trade. So I, I choose synthetic indices. So you can open a demo account, right? So these are market terminologies that you should talk about. Okay, if you understand everything I've said so far, let me know. Okay. If everything I've said so far is clear, let me know. I know the next class is going to be on Monday, weekdays, six o'clock, same time every on weekdays. Yeah, understand everything I said so far, let me know. All right, great. So this is the next thing, market terminologies. Okay. Let me open the part here. Market terminology. So we have buy, sell, pips, uh, stop loss, take profit, break even, price swap, commission spread, bid, ask, high low. We have pump, deep, FOMO, margin call, risk to reward, leverage, long short, consolidation, breakout with this. We have dump also. We have pump, dump. And dump. If you can't hear me, it's probably your network. Try to connect your audio or something. I believe every other person can hear, so it's, so it's probably your network. Okay. So, buy. When we are talking about buy, when we are talking about buy, buy okay buy this is what buy means all right this is what buy means buy when the market is going up market is buying so you buy with the belief that the market price will go up you sell with the belief that the market price will go down you buy with the belief that the market price will go up you sell with the belief that the market price will come down. You buy with the belief that the market price will go up. So that is buy. Okay. You buy with the expectation of the market price appreciating in value. And you sell with the market price was appreciating value. So as a trader, you make money when you buy and when you sell. Okay, as a trader, you make money when you buy and when you sell. So the next thing is pips. Pips. What's the meaning of pips? Telling you have to maybe you disconnect, you disconnect your audio and connect it again. You disconnect your audio and what and, and connect it again. Just try to do that right now, okay? Disconnect your audio and connect it again. Connect your audio and connect it again. So do that right now, so I can know if you can hear me or not. Okay. Let's connect the audio and connect it again. All right. So PIP is the um yeah, exactly connect and re-enter. So PIP just means percentage in points, right? Percentage of price movement. So PIP is just the smallest price move in a market, right? 
it is used to actually calculate the the um trade value. Seems like this has stopped um, screen sharing. Let me share the screen with you again. All right, great. So PIP is just the percentage in point, you know, how the price actually moves, right? From here to here, from here to this place, you know, PIP, right? So the, the price moves in PIPs, right? In currency, I try to call this, but then in synthetic, it's called points, okay? But it moves, so this, this one's here called price. This is actually price. All these numbers here, they are called price. Okay, so the next thing is what? Stop loss. Okay. Stop loss. All right. So stop loss is what you put above or below your trade order. So this is by during that. Now I can say that's where stop loss would be. But then stop loss is what you put below or above your order. So it's this stop loss that would that would um that you use to calculate how much I risk in the market. So that means if this market is my stop loss here, I'm losing what six dollars. So let's say I have a six thousand a six hundred dollar account. Yeah, don't worry, I'm I'm still explaining the stop loss. Okay, the stop loss is used to stop losses when the market goes against you. When you are wrong, the stop loss get hit in loss. When you are wrong, this is what stops your, your accounts from blowing. Okay, let's say you have a $600 account. This is 1% of $600, $6, right? So that means when this market hits your stop loss, this is your stop loss here that I've drawn. This is a buy order. The stop loss is always below it. And a sell order, the stop loss is always what's above it. Okay, sell order, the stop loss is always above it. All right, let me, let me close this by. Okay, so the stop loss is always what's above it. Why, why is the stop loss always above or below? Because when you sell and market goes against you, where does it go? It goes upwards, right? It goes upwards. So that's why the stop loss is always above. And when you are buying, if the market goes against you, it is what's selling. So it goes what's downwards, right? It goes downward. So stop loss is used to cut out your losses when the market goes against you. Okay, when market goes against you, you are wrong. Your stop loss is hit. All right. So that is how the stop loss work. Okay, the stop loss prevents you from um, expressing some sorry issues. I prevents you from expressing sorry issues. So you use this if, if it is one percent. Calculate your stop loss with one percent. You now see all of that later. But but you know stops you from even though if, when you close your app, your stop loss is still active. So that why while you are not checking your trade or something, if, if markets are against you, you won't blow your account. So if you trade without stop loss, don't trade without stop loss. Okay, don't trade without a stop loss. Don't trade without a stop loss. And then you take profits. The market exits in profits for you. Okay, the market exits in profits for you. So you take profit is always ahead, right? Because when markets goes in your favor as a seller, what happens? Stop tip is supposed to be ahead. Right, so when markets hit your TV, it's exit successfully in profit. When markets stop loss, it exits you in loss successfully also. <laughs> so stop loss. This is stop loss of a sale order. Take profit on this loss. So that means if, if this market sells to this place, right? You it will close your trade automatically. That means it, that means you don't actually have to be watching your trade. As a first, like, you don't have to be watching your, your trade all day. You don't have to watch your trade all day because you have your exit plans already. You have your stop loss. You have your take profits. That's all. Just leave your, just leave your trade to run. Just patiently leave your trade to run. Right? If you are wrong, it hits your stop loss. If you are right, it hits your take profits. That's all. Right? That's all. And for the buy also, for the buy also, it's the same thing. Is, it's, is it, it's the same scenario, okay? Same scenario. 
let's say this is your stop loss, for example. Stop loss is always below its right and loss. Then if, if this market buys from here, what's this? If, if this market price buys from here, okay, you, you please make profit, right? There are ways to calculate your stop loss profit. We'll talk about that later, but you need to understand what they're used for, okay? You just need to understand what that is for. So take profits, close you out as massively in profit. Stop loss takes you out as massively in what? In loss. Okay, so if you are using phone, or like laptop, I use my mouse to drag from here. I, I, use, I use the mouse to drag it from here to where I want to exit. But if you are using a phone, how to do that is that you, you just take this cross and, okay, this is a for example. You can see and memorize the number. Okay, maybe your stop loss has to be in um, 1.6954. Then you long press on your trade order and in, and input your stop loss, right? Input your stop loss and confirm. That's all. And if your your, your take profit also move the cross air, you know, look at the price. This is the price. This is the price around here, right? So you cram that number and then you place it. So, but for laptop users, of course, you just drag it. So laptop kind of makes this easier, right? And then we have a um, break-even price, okay? Break-even is when market price actually go in your favor and then it locks you out in profit, right? I can't do that here because this, this trade isn't running. Or that move your body, can't your stop loss ahead, right? You know, the stop loss, yeah, exists in loss, right? But then when it goes above your entry point, maybe market price has moved forward, right? When you move it forward here, market price can kick you out. Okay, so so locking you out is a break even, right? So you do not exit with a loss, okay? But then I don't always advise trading your entry price. Don't trade your entry price, though. because uh, as a swing trader, to me, trading trading that entry price is always too kind of crazy sometimes because when when market hits your trading stop and then goes to your way to trade out a lot, right? So. We have price, so this is price here. Yeah. All this, like I said, all these numbers are all price. They are all price, but then there's a way to actually know the price. Price of when to buy and when to sell, but then they are all price, just like market price. This is BTC. This is the market price, right? All the all the price I say people say this is where they are seeing it from. BTC will buy at 28k. This is 28k here. BTC will buy at 30k. This is 30k here. This is 30k. This is good. I said BTC has formed double top. This is it, and today it has been selling, as I said. Okay. It sold from 61, from, from around 61k or 60k. Let's say 60k. This is it drop down from 50, from 60k. So if this market is actually going to move between 65k to 70k or 100k, okay. So price, these are used to determine where you can actually enter your market, when you can sell, when you can see the market. So that's is price. All these numbers are all price, okay? So move to price levels later. And then swap, swap is the amount of money the broker charges you when you leave your trade over now. You know, swing traders can experience this a lot, okay? As a swing trader, you can experience this a lot, you know? The, the, the broker removes swap fees for keeping your trade overnight. All right, so I, and that shouldn't be a problem. It's not as much. There's some brokers that charge commissions, but the roof doesn't charge commission. Binary does some doesn't charge commissions, okay? But there's some wicked brokers that they charge commission. If you make um, $10, their commission can be $5, and they're not doing that this job, so that can be painful, okay? But then commission is what they charge when your trade hits or profit, right? So when that trade, when that trade, it take profit, they take commission from that trade. So, and spread. Spread is the distance between the bid and ask of the market price. Okay, spread. Let's play on, on this. Day. So this is this red line. I see this that green line. Yeah, this is the green line and the so the red line is the bid. Right, so I'm correct about that. The red line is the ask, I mean. The red line is the ask. So the red line is the ask because it is up, right? And the gray line is the 
um, bit because I know these charts on my synthetic charts. Red is actually um, as so, but then this these two are, are both um, price price um, formation levels. Okay, so they they show up. Let me use this one that will actually see the bid and ask very well. Okay. So as you can see, this is red. Hey, you can see that this one, I use red for it. So this one below is the bid, bid price. This one below is the ask price, okay? So the so the distance between these two is called spread. As you can see right now, this, the spread is small, right? Now the spread is wide, right? The spread is wide right now. The spread is becoming wide. So if the spread of the market's price is too wide, if you want to enter your, your trade around here, and the spread is too wide, it's open your trade here instead of here. Right? But when the spread is tiny, if you want to enter your trade here, it's open your trade there. Okay, so when so when the spread of the market's price is too much, it will be very hard for you to, to close you out in profit. Right. So it's always good to always trade during low spread situation or, or trade brokers with low spread. They give some low spread and, and never and some other broker that people trade gives low spread. Right. So so this spread is reasonably low though, but there are some but there are some brokers that give lower spreads, right? Or, it is what it is. So that's a spread. The distance between them is called spread. And this is the bid price. This is the ask price. More like at this current price situation, this is the price that um, sellers are willing to see. And this is the price that buyers are willing to see. So that's bid and ask today. Bid and ask, bid, sell, ask, buy, right? Bid and ask price. All right. And then we have um, high and low. So we'll, we'll continue from this one on Monday and then we'll move to this um, next one. Okay, so we have um, high and low. So what does high and low mean? High and low just simply high just means the highest price of the highest point a uh, market price as it, and then the lowest point market price as it. So if so if you can look at this this market price now, this is the high, this is the low, right? This is the high. So this is the point market low in this market situation. Right? If 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 you switch to the monthly time frame. High and low. High just means the highest point of market price. Low just means the lowest point of market price. High and low. It's as it is straightforward. So when people talk about um, BTC is reaching an all-time high, that means the price is really high. BTC is reaching an all-time low, that means the price has really gone down. Okay, so this is kind of taking long to load. So that's just um, what it means. Um, high and low. High and low. All right. So if you have any question for, based on today's class, let me know, and then we close for the day and move forward to the next day. Okay, we'll close for you and move forward to the next day. All right, so high and low. We'll talk about some all of that. When we when we move to these strange places, that's where we see more of high and low, and they understand the meaning of them. And they will move to this one, and they will move to this one, and then we move to the craziest of them or this one, and then we move to risk management. Okay, so if you have any questions so far. And everything I said today, put that in the description box. Let me know. Any questions so far based on today's lesson? Let me know. Let me know. Any any questions so far? Yeah, break even price. Like I said, it is more like you enter a trade. Your your trade do not actually hit your stop loss. All right. I mean, your your trade didn't hit your take profit. Okay. So you moved your um, stop loss forward. Okay, you moved your stop loss forward, right? So when you move your stop loss forward, the market hits your stop loss, but it hits you in profit instead of loss. So that's a break even, right? Because um, this is a low risk trade, you have nothing to lose, right? But then I always advise not to throw your stop loss. Yeah, I advise not to throw your stop loss. All right. That it is you that is just to do that. Most of the times, I always advise not to throw your stop loss. Okay. So the the stop loss, I've, I've, I've explained that like um so many times. Many times stop loss is the order you put on your trade position so that when the market goes against you, it stops you out immediately. 
it stops you out in your little loss immediately. So that the market won't just go, go low and low and low. There's a level you place your stop loss that tells you that you're actually wrong. So that's what the stop loss is for. Just to cause your losses automatically, no emotions involved. You don't have to close by yourself. It closes automatically. All right, it closes automatically. So there's a recording. You, you can um, go by the recording. I will drop the link and then we can move on from there. So see you again. I'm really happy to see your faces. I like I still just picked up this and put this face. So see you all on Monday.